Today we are talking about the DJI Digital FPV drone and we're going to be talking about crash damage. Now this video is going to give you guys some info, hints and tips on what to check if you've crashed your DJI drone. Now just to be clear, if you've crashed this thing and you've ripped an arm off it, this video isn't going to help you. You already know what the problem is at that point. You either need to order a new arm and rebuild the drone or send it in for repair. The idea of this video is to give you a list of things to check if you've crashed your drone and you can't see any visible damage or you've crashed it and you're getting errors such as GPS and things like that. And we're gonna walk through certain things you can check if that has happened. Now, just before we jump into it, I just wanna say, if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. We've got a whole host of videos coming up on this FPV drone around the radio system, looking at it with a spectrum analyzer and things like that. If you're interested in seeing them, hitting the bell next to it as well, will get you the notification when those videos are released. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel further, there are links to the DJI FPV drone, the goggles in the description. They are affiliate links and I will receive a small commission by you using them however it is a great way for you guys to be able to support the channel without any real additional cost to yourself anyway let's get on with this video and let's talk about what sort of things you should check if it's had a little bit of a tumble Okay, so you've had a crash with your DJI FPV drone and somehow you've won the lottery in the sense of you haven't ripped one of its limbs off or you haven't completely destroyed it. For that feat alone, you get 10 points. However, just because it looks okay doesn't mean it 100% is. Anyway, let's walk through some of the things to check. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the frame and specifically the main arms as well as the front legs because there are some important things you need to be aware of here. Now, with regards to checking the frame for damage, it's fairly simple and straightforward. You want to be checking around the arms and legs at the back, making sure that there is no damage or any additional cracks being shown. Where you have the lines where the frame meets the arms, make sure that the gaps look consistent and they don't look any different to how it usually should. Flipping it over underneath, looking around these areas here to make sure that there's no additional stress being shown and it doesn't seem like the arm has got any damage. The same stands for the arms on the front. You want to be making sure that everything looks okay underneath, around the top, and really just give everything a bit of a hold and a pull, not too much because you could break it yourself, just making sure that no cracks or anything visible opens up that wasn't there before. Now, moving around to the front, you have two legs here that do tend to take the brunt of the damage in a crash. And these are quite important because they hold the LEDs for the signaling system on the front, but they also have two of the four internal OcuSync antennas. Now, these two antennas are what sends your video stream back to your goggles. And if there's any damage to those antennas, you will suffer a performance drop. Now, as I've mentioned, the FPV drone has four antennas in total. Total. Well, it actually has six. It has four antennas for the radio system and it has an additional two antennas for the ear scent system. But the main two are located one in each leg at the front for the FPV and then there's one on each side of the drone in the arms of the drone here and here. Now when you have looked at the front and if you have managed to rip one of these off what you want to be looking at is is that PCB damaged? Is the connector okay on it and the coax that runs to it okay as well? Because if there is any damage to that you are going to need to replace it. Now that is the basics on the frame really. It's simple as is there any cracks that are new? Is there anything opening up that there shouldn't be and does anything look out of price with regards to the legs. Moving up to the motors, again, fairly simple and easy to check. What you want to do is make sure your motors are rotating smoothly. Now the motors on the FPV drone do lug in the sense of you can feel the magnet as you rotate the motor. That is perfectly normal. And the easiest thing to do is if you want to check that your motor is okay, check they all feel the same the chances are you're not going to damage all four. So do all motors rotate freely? Is there any noises you wouldn't expect to hear? Something like scraping or something moving? Take a look down inside the top of the motor and check for any debris. If you want to make sure that there's no dust and stuff in there, you can get an ear duster and blow it out. Or if you haven't got one of them, alternatively get your hoover and just give the top of the motor a vacuum just to make sure it sucks anything out. If you have managed to 
dip one of them in the mud, you do want to get all of that out. Even the smallest piece of grit has the potential to jam the motor in flight and it could result in you losing your drone. Now, looking at the top of the motor on the FPV, we have four springs that are located on the center shaft. So again, you want to make sure all of them are in place and you want to check that the quick release connectors are not damaged as well, which hold the props on. Because again, any damage to these could easily result of a loss of the aircraft in the air. And again, compare them all to make sure it all looks correct. If anything is untoward, do not fly, get it fixed, get it replaced before risking it. Otherwise, you could end up actually losing the drone. The next big thing to check with the drone is the gimbal and camera. Now the camera obviously has a glass lens and it's fairly easy to see if there's any damage to that. With regards though to the gimbal, you want to make sure that it is moving freely and again, just like the motors, you're not feeling anything untoward. Now unlike the motor, you won't feel that cogging effect on the gimbal. It should be nice and smooth and moves up and down. Now the gimbal is actually attached to the drone with a four rubber mount connector connector with some very thin wires that run between the gimbal and the drone itself. Now to access that you actually have to remove the front cover and you can see all of that located underneath. If you are getting gimbal errors on the drone after having a crash the first thing you want to do is make sure that it does feel smooth, that there isn't anything actually restricting its movement. When you turn it on, is the gimbal actually performing its maneuver? So is it flipping it up and down? Is it doing that initial calibration? If it isn't, what I would suggest doing is taking the front cover off and have a look if anything's come dislodged. You've got the very thin cables that come out the top and just check to see if any of them have actually got damaged. Other than that, there is very little repair you can actually do to the gimbal itself other there being dirt or debris in it which again you can remove with an air duster uh, you're gonna have to actually replace the unit if you have done some more serious damage such as smashing the lens or actually damaging the gimbal itself Moving around to the bottom of the drone, you have the VPS and object avoidance system. Now, this is a four camera system that uses two cameras on the front for object sensing and two cameras underneath for the visuals tracking when using it for landing. Now, these are fairly straightforward to check. Basically, you're looking for similar things that you're looking for the gimbal on the front. So is there any cracked glass? Do the TOF sensors underneath have any damage? Is the unit fixed hard? Is it loose? Now, if you do get object sensing errors or visual positioning sensing errors, you can calibrate this module and you need to do it via the Assistant 2 for FPV. However, if after calibration you're still getting errors, the chances are the unit is damaged or there's actually a fault with the module itself and you're going to have to end up replacing it. Other than doing the calibration on this system, there isn't a lot more you can do to diagnose it other than actually replacing the module itself. Now, moving around to the back of the drone, we have our battery connector, and alongside the main two pins for power, there are three additional pins for communication. Because the FPV drone uses a smart battery, it communicates from the battery to the drone via those three additional pins. Now, if you have crashed and you're getting things like battery error, it won't let you take off and you're not seeing any battery telemetry data, you want to be looking at this connector on both sides, both on the drone and the battery. On the drone side, make sure the pins are all okay in the middle. There are three little additional ones. Make sure there's no debris in there causing any problems as the connector goes in, because if that battery connector isn't making proper contact, you're not going to be able to take off with the drone. Now, on the battery side of things, you want to be checking it as well and just make sure if it's got wet that there's no corrosion and or there isn't anything preventing those communication pins working if you do have a battery that shows a error and it won't work try another one and see if the other battery is the same to try and diagnose if it's the drone or the battery itself if it stays with the battery then you want to try cleaning up the connector especially the three little pins whereas if it stays with each battery then you know it's the drone side of things now that is most of the external things to check to make sure it's okay however there are there are some internal components that can easily get damaged as well. Now, the first of these is the GPS system. Now, the GPS is what tells the drone to hold its position, and there's a GPS patch antenna located towards the back, and it's the little square thing with the DJI logo on it. Now, just like normal
normal GPS antennas, this is actually a ceramic patch antenna and it is quite easy to damage even in a minor crash. It doesn't actually have to get directly hit. Some force could actually cause the antenna to crack and give you GPS problems. So if you have had a crash and you're getting very poor GPS signal, there is a possibility that you've actually damaged the antenna. If you're getting GPS antenna errors, so for instance, it's not showing a signal at all and it says things like GPS error, you want to be looking again if there's any damage around the antenna, but you want to be checking the ribbon cables that run from the top board down to the bottom boards from the GPS because whilst that board is on the top you've got the fan you've got the GPS antenna you've then got these ribbon cables which are very thin similar to what we have inside mobile phones that run down inside and they are very easy to get damaged now you could also damage those cables if you were replacing the top cover so if you have replaced the cover and you're getting gps errors you want to be going in and again having a look at those cables making sure that there's nothing untoward now unfortunately these are very thin ribbon cables and if they do get damaged you're gonna actually have to replace them or send it in to dji Above the GPS antenna, we have the cooling fan. Now, this is a very simple component to be checking. It'll either work or it won't. If you turn your DJI drone on and you get some strange noises from it, that is probably one of the first places to look. If anything has actually got in there, the fan will make a bit of a strange noise, just like a fan in a computer or anything else. Now, the fan will usually come on about 10 to 30 seconds after first turning on the drone if you do fire your drone up and your fan doesn't begin to work the chances are something is wrong you want to be checking the cables to the fan on the sides and checking that the fan rotates freely with your finger and making sure that there's nothing blocking it if it sounds a bit like there is something jammed in there take the cover off and have a look if there has been any debris that's managed to get through the dji drone uh, hole at the top doesn't actually go through to the fan so you should shouldn't get anything going through here it's actually a vanity panel however there's always the possibility of something getting up underneath or something internally coming loose and jamming the fan itself if you're getting high temp errors on the drone again check that fan is running too make sure it's doing what it should be doing the next thing i just want to quickly talk about is the imu because there is a vibration isolated imu in this drone which is located at the front and whilst it isn't in a position that is easy to damage if you did have a full front on crash there is the possibility of it getting dislodged or even damaging the ribbon cable. Now, to get to this IMU, you do actually have to remove this, again, vanity panel front cover, and located right at the top at the back is the IMU. It's held in place with four rubber isolators, and there's a very thin ribbon cable that runs underneath to it to actually carry the signals. Again, if you were to have this in a full frontal crash, it would be possible to do damage. So if you fire your DJI FPV drone up and you're getting IMU errors, the first thing you want to try doing is recalibrating the drone. But if that doesn't work, you want to take the front vanity cover off and actually have a look if there's any damage to that ribbon cable and the IMU is actually holding in place. On older IMUs, they could actually get stuck in the event of a high impact force situation. The, we haven't really seen that with modern DJI drones, but an old trick, for instance, on some of the Phantom 3 models was to give the aircraft, frankly, a good hit in the opposite direction it took the crash hit on. And that would sort of sometimes reset the sensors. However, it isn't really something we've seen on this and it isn't something I would expect you to need to do. If you are getting the IMU errors though, try doing the IMU calibration following the process and do make sure that you are moving the drone when you are doing it because it does have to move through various angles. But again, if you're still getting errors after that, the chances are the IMU or its ribbon cable has got damaged. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is range and signal. Now, if you've had a crash and your signal has dropped, there are some things that you can check. As I said at the start, the two front legs have the PCB antennas and there are an additional two antennas located on the sides. With these, again, you're looking for external damage to the antenna or the cables themselves. And you want to make sure that the cables to the connections on the PCB are actually in because it is remotely possible for these to get unplugged. 
Now there are two connectors for the antennas located on the GPS board at the top. These should be under a little foam pad, but if they're not, there is enough room there for them to actually pop off. And then there are an additional two connectors on the side of the PCB for the antennas as well. Really what you're looking for is any damage to the PCBs, any damage to the cable, and then make sure all of those connectors are correctly seated because it is fairly easy for one of them to pop off and you would get quite a substantial difference in performance if that was to happen. Now, if you were to damage one of the front PCBs, the simple answer is just replace it. Just order another one, put it on with a new leg and you should be all sorted. Now that is pretty much it for this video. It was simply just a couple of comments and things to check. Again, if you've managed to rip a leg off it, you really at that point know what you've got to do. You've got to send it in for repair. But if it does seem to come out unscathed, do check these things over and do make sure everything is functioning as it should be. The initial most important ones is cracks on the arms and legs and making sure all motors are freely running and there's no damage there because they're the kind of things that will cause the drone to fall out the sky if something goes wrong. Like many of the DJI drones, these are very good at diagnosing their own issues, but there are downsides to that. And for instance, if you were to damage the VPS system on the bottom, the drone probably won't take off. If it's not getting all of the power and information for the battery properly, it won't take off. So whilst you can have broken parts you don't want to use, the problem is the way the integrated DJI systems work is they have to be working before the drone will actually let you take off. So even things like gimbal errors can cause you to be stuck on the ground. Overall, it really is the same type of basics that you have to do on any drone after a crash. But again, as I said at the start, there is always the chance on this one specifically of doing a bit more damage than you would usually expect because it is a little bit more fragile than the other ones out there. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you found the information interesting. If you've got any comments on damage that you've had, you've seen pictures, please do put them in the comments of this video. I'd be really interested to see them. If there's anything you think I've missed, please do put it in the comments of the video and I'll stick it as a pin at the top as well just to make sure that we share as much information on this as we possibly can. As I've already said, if you do find it interesting, please do hit, consider hitting the subscribe button. And as I've already said again, there is some really good videos coming up on the radio system on this and I've got some gear coming in that I'm going to be able to share some nice view and stuff of how certain bits of this system actually work. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching and I will put another video out again soon.